Hi, welcome to Bridgeview United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Jen Logston Kellogg. This is worship for January 16th, 2022. It is Martin Luther King Jr. weekend, and I'm actually recording this on January 15th, Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. I feel like I'm giving you a captain's log update from Star Trek or something. Uh, we have had an experience of a COVID resurgence in our area in Oklahoma. And so we have gone to virtual only worship to relieve the burden on our healthcare system, to protect the health of those in our congregation and those that we're connected to. And hopefully this is a one-time thing and we'll be back live next week. But as for today, I'm glad you're worshiping with us for Martin Luther King Jr. Day. The sermon today is called Beloved Community. And we are beginning a series called Shattering the Stained Glass Window. And I'll be talking more in the sermon about the introduction to this series. With that, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. May the peace of Christ be with you. No matter how far we wander from you, O oh God, your steadfast love finds us. No matter how unjust the world seems to us, O oh God, your steadfast righteousness sustains us. No matter how vulnerable our lives seem to us, O oh God, your steadfast presence gives us hope. No matter how unloved and uncared for we feel, O oh God, you hear our cries and answer our prayers. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, source of all wholeness, forgiveness, and mercy, may your spirit heal those who are torn, mend those who are broken, and protect those who are fragile. Enable us, O oh God, through the gift of your steadfast love, to remember who we are and whose we are. In your love, may we be true and faithful disciples of your child, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Please hear this word from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 12. Siblings, I don't want you to be ignorant about spiritual gifts. You know that when you were Gentiles, you were often misled by false gods that can't even speak. So I want to make it clear to you that no one says Jesus is cursed when speaking by God's Spirit. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different spiritual gifts but the same Spirit, and there are different ministries and the same Lord. And there are different activities but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. A demonstration of the Spirit is given to each person for the common good. A word of wisdom is given by the Spirit to one person, a word of knowledge to another according to the same Spirit, faith to still another by the same Spirit, gifts of healing to another in the one Spirit, performance of miracles to another, prophecy to another, the ability to tell spirits apart to another, different kinds of tongues to another, and the interpretation of the tongues to another. All these things are produced by the one and same Spirit who gives what he wants, what God wants to each person. Christ is just like the human body. A body is a unit and has many parts, and all the parts of the body are one body, even though there are many. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Our scripture for the sermon today comes from Isaiah chapter 62, verses 1 through 7. For Zion's sake, I won't keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I won't sit still, until her righteousness shines out like a light, and her salvation blazes like a torch. Nations will see your righteousness, all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name, which the Lord's own mouth will determine. You will be a splendid garland in the Lord's hand, a royal turban in the palm of God's hand. You will no longer be called abandoned, and your land will no longer be called deserted. Instead, you will be called, my delight is in her, and your land married. Because the Lord delights in you, your land will be cared for once again. As a young man marries a young woman, so your sons will marry you. With the joy of a bridegroom because of his bride, so your God will rejoice because of you. Upon your walls, Jerusalem, I have appointed sentinels. Continually, all day and all night, they won't keep silent. You who call on the Lord, don't rest, and don't allow God to rest, until God establishes Jerusalem and makes it the praise of the earth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So today we are beginning a new sermon series called Shattering the Stained Glass Window. And that comes, the, night, the title comes from a campaign and a magazine that has been produced by the conference, the Oklahoma United Methodist Conference, called Shattering the Stained Glass Window, subtitled Addressing Racism in the Church. For the next several weeks, we'll be talking about racism in the church and specifically, what can we do? We begin by telling the truth and telling the story. Racism in Oklahoma is different than racism in any other place. We have our own story to tell. And part of the campaign of Shattering the Stained Glass Window is to lift up the voices of the people whose stories have traditionally not been told in the church. The United Methodist Church in Oklahoma and its predecessor denominations have a history that is unique and beautiful and tortured and good and bad and all of the things in between. This production of Shattering the Stained Glass Window is a collection of sermons, devotionals, written by clergy of color. And some of those clergy will be joining us as guest preachers in the weeks to come. I'm very excited to be able to offer a diversity of voices to my congregation, to Bridgeview United Methodist Church. Today, we are celebrating Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And we have a name that God has given us. And I think that Martin Luther King Jr., one of the gifts that he has given to the church is to both name that name and to give us a vision for it. And that is the beloved community. We are called to be the beloved community of people where all are included and not just included, but welcomed and not just welcomed, but valued because of each person's uniqueness and diversity. If you joined us last week, you may know that our last week's sermon was called Beloved, and we talked about the baptism of Jesus and how Jesus was named God's beloved. God, in Jesus' baptism, said, This is my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. And each of us remembered our baptisms and remembered, even if we haven't been formally baptized, that we are beloved by God and that God delights in each one of us. But there's no such thing as solo Christianity. Christianity is the gathering of the people. Church means the gathering of the people. Not a building, not a sanctuary, not even a worship service. The gathering of those who are beloved by God. And the gathering is incomplete if any one person is missing. So the beloved community in each congregation is composed of those who are present, those who have been present in the past, and those who will be present 
And the question that we are asking ourselves when we're talking about shattering the stained glass window is, who's missing? Now, I'm preaching to you from Bridgeview United Methodist Church, which is a predominantly white congregation in a suburban area in Oklahoma. We have a, de a delightful group of people who value inclusivity and diversity. And yet, when you look around our congregation, most of us look pretty white. We have a pretty common, for the most part, background in terms of our Christian upbringing as United Methodists. There's a little bit of diversity among denominations, but not a whole lot of diversity outside of Christian denominations. There's a little bit of a diversity in experience and education level and all those kinds of things, but let's be honest, we're a suburban white congregation in Norman, Oklahoma. And there is history right around us that we have not been exposed to. And in Shattering the Stained Glass Window, we're going to lift up the stories and the voices of those who have not been heard from. One of the things that I have loved in reading and learning about Martin Luther King Jr.'s ministry and work is that he was not afraid to be a prophet, to stand on the walls and to say, here is where we are missing the mark. Now you may be familiar with the speech, I Have a Dream, given at the Lincoln Memorial. In preparation for this sermon today, I listened to that speech again. And the great, wonderful description that he gives of the beloved community when he says, I have a dream that little black girls and little white girls and the little black boys and little white boys will be all together holding hands when he gives the description of the beloved community in which each person is valued, not by the color of this, their skin, but by the content of their character, that is only followed by several minutes of realistic descriptions of all the ways in which people are not treated as if they are beloved by the community. Yes, we love to lift up the positive imagery of this beloved community that God wants for us and that we are all striving toward. But the truth is that we're not there yet. In Letter to Birmingham Jail, which I also read in preparation to preach this sermon, Martin Luther King is even more direct in speaking specifically to the white Christian and Jewish leaders in the communities in the South in which ongoing racism is rampant. And he says, I'm having more trouble right now with those of you who claim to be Christian and who are complacent than with those who are actively working against me, actively working against us. And one of the things that he says is that the stained glass windows need to be shattered. We value the traditions of the church. We value having order in the church. But that order and those traditions have been upheld in such a way that they center people who have primarily a white Christian experience. And we have to face the discomfort of the ways that we have excluded the voices of those who look different, whose music is different, whose style of preaching is different, whose way of being in the world is different. Different, I think, is good. In this scripture today, in Isaiah 62, Isaiah, the prophet, is speaking of Zion and speaking of Jerusalem as this beloved city of God. And he says, I won't sit still until her righteousness shines out like a light. And he talks about how wonderful Zion, the city of Jerusalem, is 
but that she is not living up to her potential and that she will be. And that it takes somebody standing up, seeing the big picture and speaking the truth to continue to call Jerusalem forward into the life that God has in mind for her. The name of our church is Bridgeview, and I've been thinking a lot about what that means for us and for our calling in this particular time and the way we are to be church right now. And one of the things that I think a bridge means is that it is a connector between communities or people or places that otherwise would have a difficult time getting to each other. But the view from the bridge is another way of thinking about those who are able to see far off into the distance and to call those who are down on the ground trying as hard as they can to do what they have to do today to see how they fit into the big picture, into the whole. It's hard, hard work to tell the truth about the ways that racism continues to divide us from one another in 2022. In the last couple of years, we have had um, a reason to revisit the conversation. And it is tempting, very tempting, to shy away and to speak less than frankly about the ways that systemic racism still keeps some people in places where they are less beloved than others. I look forward to being able to share with you some of the stories of those who come from different backgrounds, who express their faith in different ways, and to share with you what we in the white church have been missing. That will be the work of this series, shattering the stained glass window. May we continue to act and become the beloved community that God has called us to be. Amen. The Lord is gracious and merciful, abounding in steadfast love. Let us draw near with faith, offer praise and thanksgiving to God, and pray for the needs of the world. Please join with me in this prayer of confession. Lord, we confess our day-to-day -day failure to be truly human. Lord, we confess that we often fail to love with all we have and are, often because we do not fully understand what loving means, often because we are afraid of risking ourselves, Lord, we cut ourselves off from each other and we erect barriers of division. Lord, we confess that by silence and ill-considered word, we have built up walls of prejudice. Lord, we confess that by selfishness and lack of sympathy, we have stifled generosity and left little time for others. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Help us listen to your word of forgiveness, for we are very deaf. Come, fill this moment and free us from sin. I invite you to reflect silently for a moment. The Lord God is merciful and gracious, endlessly patient, loving, and true, showing mercy, forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin, and granting pardon. Let us pray. Dear God, we pray together for those who suffer from ongoing systems that oppress and discriminate. We pray for those who do not see either by choice or because they have not been exposed to these systems of injustice. We pray, dear God, that you would give us the courage to speak truth to walk around with our eyes fully open and to engage in life with people who are different than we are. We pray that you would continue to form us into the beloved community 
and that we would be conformed to the image of Christ. Let us pray now together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for worship. We do have one closing song. I invite you to connect with us either on Facebook or through our website. We would love for you to visit us in person when it is feasible to do that again. We do honor and appreciate the flexibility of all in our congregation. And if you have found us today and you've not worshiped with us before, I hope you will continue to look for us. Go in peace. Someday.